The iconography of Britain. Number two, the red London bus. The red double-decker bus is so synonymous with the image of London that it has become a global symbol of London and Britain. It is unquestionable that the London red bus should have a place in the pantheon of British iconic design. So take your seats and make sure you have the correct fare as we take a journey into the story of the red London double-decker bus. The London General Omnibus Company, or LGOC, was founded in 1855 to regulate the disparate horse-drawn omnibus operations in London. The company produced the first motor omnibus for London in 1909 with the X-Type. This was rapidly followed by the B-Type design, which is recognized as one of the first mass-produced vehicles. Introduced in 1911 and by 1913, around 2,500 had entered service. 900 were even used to move troops behind the front line in France and Belgium during World War I. The Associated Equipment Company, AEC, was created as a subsidiary of the London General Omnibus Company in 1912 to build buses and other equipment. AEC would provide the vast majority of the London bus fleet for the next 50 years. AEC designed and built lorries based on the X-type chassis that were pivotal to the military logistics of the time. The company produced various models of lorries with names beginning with M and buses starting with R. The lineage of the Routemaster can be traced back to the AEC range from the early 1920s as the distinctive styling of a single side cab and the motor housing flush to the front of the bus rather than being housed in a protruding bonnet. When London Transport was formed in 1933, it inherited a fleet of mixed vehicles that were gradually being standardised. It was this quest for standardization that was to give birth to the design icon we all know and love today. The Regent RT It became a primary objective of the operator to find a design to provide all services and in the late 1930s AEC built the first batch of the Regent 3 RT as a replacement for the existing STL design. The Regent RTs entered service in June 1939, only for the order to be slashed in half following the outbreak of World War II in September of that year. During the war, AEC and London bus productions were focused on armaments, planes and tank production, which was to become important in the future development of the Routemaster. Production resumed in 1946, and the Regent RT was to become ubiquitous on the streets of London, replacing the tram and trolleybus network across the capital. London Transport and other regions took receipt of over 7,000 post-war built Regent RT buses between 1947 and 1954. Whilst people know the name of the Routemaster bus, which was eventually to replace the Regent, the Regent, or RT, is as iconic as the Routemaster, or RM. There were more RTs built than any other class of bus before and since, and many claim that it is the RT, the Regent, that is the British icon. It is without doubt the RT that first projected the iconic London Red bus to the world. In the 1950s, a group of the buses participated in a world tour to promote tourism to London. A group travelled across America and Canada for 12,000 miles without incident or mechanical fault. The RT fleet served the London public until final withdrawal in April 1979 and the standardised overhaul process employed at the Aldenham Works on the edge of Elstree was almost certainly responsible for this long life. Buses would be taken to the works once every three to four years and completely stripped and overhauled. Standardised parts meant that while a bus might drive out of the works with the same number, the chassis and fixtures could be from other buses. This large works, in fact the largest bus works in the world, was opened in 1956 and the infrastructure investment in the standardised maintenance line would be significant in the design of the forthcoming Routemaster fleet. Despite the widespread use of the RT buses, the technology and design was already almost 10 years old by the time they were being introduced in large numbers. A design brief for the next evolution in the London bus was already on the table while RTs were still being rolled off the production line. Improved fuel efficiency for the austerity of the post-war economy, better speeds and easier operation alongside the requirement to be maintained at the Aldenham Works. RT buses were used as test beds for many of the mechanical innovations for the new fleet. 
The Route Master was in development between 1947 and 1956 by a team under Albert Durant and Colin Curtis with styling by Douglas Scott. The vehicle featured aluminium body shells following aircraft construction techniques. This weight-saving design also included independent front suspension, power steering, automatic gearbox and power hydraulic braking. The major change from previous bus construction was that the RM had a body frame but no chassis. Once this innovation was combined with the aluminium construction, a Routemaster double-decker bus could seat 64 passengers and weigh less than a modern single-decker bus with half the capacity. The aluminium body also meant that it did not corrode at the same rate as steel body construction. The first prototype was unveiled at the Commercial Vehicle Show in Earls Court in 1954, but the type continued to undergo rigorous testing and redesign to produce the best bus possible for the demanding conditions of the London services. It was not until November the 11th, 1959, that the first Routemasters entered service. This long development process probably accounts for the durability and performance standards of the RM. The production of Routemasters ran until 1968. Further information on Routemaster variants is available on our website, link in the description, but here is a brief summary. The RM and the RML. The vast majority of Routemasters built with the traditional RM standard with 2,123 of the 27.5 feet or 8.38 metre long vehicles. Alongside this type, London Transport also took receipt of 524 RML models, a longer version at 29.9 feet or 9.12 metres with an extra half window section in the middle of the body adding 8 extra seats. RMC and RCL. Coach versions were designed for longer journeys, a bigger engine partly to offset the extra weight but also to give smoother running at higher speeds. Modified suspension and an electric rear door instead of an open platform were also included. The seats were given deeper upholstery and spaced further apart along with luggage racks. The immediate differences on the exterior were the door and double headlights, RMF and RMA. This was an amended design in an attempt to sell to markets outside of London. It featured electronic operated doors at the front of the bus and the staircase was relocated to behind the driving compartment. 50 RMFs were ordered by Northern General Transport Company for work in the northeast of England. They operated into urban services from 1964 and proved popular with the drivers and passengers. British European Airways also ordered 65 RMAs, the shorter body type, for use as a Heathrow Express fleet. FRM the Front Entrance Routemaster, or FRM, was an attempt in the late 60s to update the Routemaster to the layout used by almost every other bus manufacturer at the time. The engine compartment was moved to the back of the vehicle and front entrance doors with a full-width windscreen were at the front. It was nicknamed the Fruitmaster and a brief and solitary experiment into redesigning and remodelling the Routemaster variety. Upon introduction, the Routemaster was immediately put to work in the last phase of the scheme to retire the trolley buses across the London network, which was achieved by May 1962. The next 500 Routemasters were introduced to replace previous generations of buses, the aforementioned AEC RT Regent and others such as the Leyland RTL and RTW. Lengthened RMLs displaced RMs on central routes to improve capacity, and the last Routemasters entered service in March 1968. The RT Regents managed to continue in service far beyond expectations, but eventually came to end in 1979. The Daimler Fleet Line, known as the DMS, was the proposed replacement for the Routemaster and came into service in 1971. It was unpopular for slow loading times because of the narrow doors and the rear engine tended to overheat, unlike the naturally ventilated Routemaster with her front engine. All Daimler fleet lines were withdrawn by 1983 and many languished at the back of bus depots for almost a decade. 1975 saw another attempt to replace the Routemaster, the Metropolitan, a joint venture between Scania and Metro Camel Wayman, MCW. Far more reliable than the DMS, it too failed to win the hearts of Londoners and the 164 strong fleet were all also withdrawn by 1983. Finally, in 1978, two new designs started to challenge the Routemaster, the MCW Metrobus 
and the Leyland Titan B15. The new models saw some route masters relegated from major routes or taken out of service to be used for training. The first fleet withdrawal started in September 1982 after the Greater London Council lost a political battle over their subsidised fare scheme. The RT three or four year overhaul cycle at Aldenham Works had been increased to a five year cycle overhaul program with the route masters and along with the excellent design it is this methodical approach that is credited with the lifespan of the models. Buses literally left the works as good as new. It is often said that the finishing line at the works as buses were lined up for application of their advertising gleaming in a brand new coat of red paint was a sight to behold. Sadly Financial cutbacks put pressure on the future of the works, and as route master numbers started to decline and the later generations of buses which were not suited to this complete overhaul program increased, Aldenham was condemned to closure and closed its doors in November 1986. The impressive site was eventually demolished in 1996 and is now the Centennial Business Park. Many routes were converted to driver-only operation in the 1970s in response to staff shortages and operating costs. Complications also came about with the closure of AEC, and for a time, route master parts were difficult to source. Rear-engined driver-only operation buses began to bite into the route master territory, and the grand old ladies were gradually reduced to central London routes only. Despite the age of the design and the economic case against two-person operation, the route master acceleration and carefully considered design continually demonstrated it was better suited to the urban hustle of London than the more modern designs. Fleet withdrawals continued to eat into the numbers until 1988, and then fleet numbers remained relatively constant until 1992. Aside from the London Red, officially Pantone 485C Red, the same colour used by Royal Mail, London Underground, Kit Kat and McDonald's amongst others, many routemasters served in the distinct Green Line livery. The Routemaster had such a long service life that 25 examples were painted for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977 and then obviously 50 were painted gold in 2002. Clydeside Scottish purchased 114 Routemasters in the mid-1980s and they could be seen on the streets of Glasgow in red and yellow colours until 1990. In 1986, following deregulation of the bus sector, many operating companies saw Routemasters as a cheap way of expanding their fleet and examples were seen in a variety of colour schemes in Bedford, Blackpool, Burnley, Carlisle, Corby, Doncaster, Dundee, Glasgow, Hull, Manchester, Perth, Rotherham, Scarborough, Southampton and Southend-on-Sea. For a time, Reading had the second largest fleet of routemasters, with 45 working throughout the town. They were in use up to the year 2000. As the Routemaster fleet began to age and the cost of maintenance began to increase, alongside the cost of two-man operation, many examples found their way back to London to donate spare parts or be pressed back into service on the streets of the capital. Privatisation had been initiated in the early 90s and the new operators were required to maintain Routemaster operation for the five-year contract duration. It became rapidly apparent that without AEC or Aldenham Works, a new solution would be required to maintain the units. Impressively, even though some were looking rather tired, upon inspection the fleet was structurally sound and focus for refurbishment was for engine units and interior furnishing. In 2001-2002, 50 RMs were purchased from operators outside London, including two from Italy, and after refurbishments and re-engine overhaul, almost 30 were put to work on central London routes. Debate raged over the benefits or difficulties of maintaining the Routemaster in London in the early 21st century. More modern buses were arriving on the scene, including the deeply unpopular Bendy buses. Developments such as the Oyster Card scheme and off-bus ticketing continued to help the Routemaster improve on its reduced boarding times. But impending disability discrimination legislation was to be the death knell of the Routemaster. The impending law, which was to make wheelchair access a requirement, came into force in October 2014. London Transport decided to make the move earlier, and the last route master in general service ran on December 9, 2005. RM2217 ran the last service, on police advice during the middle of the day rather than a normal shift lasting until 11 o'clock at night. 
the final departure from Marble Arch at 12.08 arrived in Brixton, heavily delayed. The last final corner into Brixton Garage took ten minutes. Crowds blocked the route throughout with emotional fond farewells, and at 14.06 the route master era came to an end. Two heritage routes, Route 9 and Route 15, for continued route master operations were introduced, mostly for tourists, with a small fleet of 20 buses selected from the 2001-2002 refurbishment purchase. This was reduced to one route in July 2014, and in 2019 that final route was cancelled. London Transport Museum and other owners operate running days for the public on certain routes in London, a small open-top fleet soldiered on in Edinburgh before withdrawal in 2016. Yeah. Route masters were successfully exported across the world, seeing service in Australia, Canada, China, Colombia, Croatia, the Falkland Islands, Malaysia, New Zealand, Sri Lanka and the United States. The Route Master was such a part of the London scene for so many years that its appearances in film and TV are too numerous to even begin to list. The AECRT Regent has actually starred in some significant film scenes, including James Bond Live and Let Die. A post-war RT appears in a chase scene in The Mummy Returns, which was set in the 1930s. And three RT buses, RT2240, RT3882 and RT4497 were rebuilt into the two purple triple-decker buses to star as the night bus in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. But, undoubtedly, the most famous red bus film role was the British musical comedy Summer Holiday. Cliff Richard takes the wheel of a converted RT bus to head off to the south of France. The film company actually bought three RTs, 2305, 2366 and 4326, which were all converted and given the number 1881 for filming. The first ten minutes of the film are shot in the Aldenham Works, with Cliff on an RT suspended from a crane at one point. The popularity of the Route Master was so enduring, especially in the light of the unsuccessful Bendy bus fleet, that London Mayor Boris Johnson suggested bringing an updated Route Master design back to the streets of London. A revised design was named the New Route Master, and a fleet of 1,000 were built, but it is more of a love letter to the past rather than the genuine AEC Route Master successor. An impressive 1,280 of the 2,876 Route Masters built have survived in preservation in locations all over the world. It is believed around 100 Regents survive, but some are in better condition than others. This example, in Abrojuelo, Spain, that I found in my wanderings, might not be able to hit the roads any time soon. Despite just being a bus, the Route Master and her predecessor, the Regent, have become part of the cultural landscape of Britain. London became a rather unique tourist destination where people arrived simply to ride on a bus. The London Red Bus arguably inspired the globally popular idea of open-top tourist bus routes across major cities. It is immediately recognized as a symbol of the British sense of eccentricity with their open rear platform, sleek stylized lines and distinct livery providing the perfect package for a mechanical and engineering success. A truly internationally admired symbol of Britain.